This is Mrs. Wainwright's Math Class, Chapter 11, Lesson 5, Unit Cubes and Solid Figures. Today's learning target, by the end of this lesson, you should confidently be able to say, I know what a unit cube is, and I can find the number of cubic units in a solid figure. This is a unit cube. It's a three-dimensional figure that has a length from left to right, for this cube is one unit, a width, which is the front to back section, and a height, which is the bottom to top section. So it's a cube because the length, the width, then the, and the height are all the same. They're all one unit. Notice that it's square on every single side, thus making it a regular unit cube. Unit cubes have faces. A face is like a flat side. Let's take a look at the front face of this unit cube. Here it is. This is the front face of this unit cube. So that's one face. I'll use a tally mark to record the one. In addition to a front face, a cube, like a block or like a die, which is one piece of dice, also has a back face. So let's erase the highlighting on the front. Let's highlight the back face of this cube. This is the back face of this cube. And it's a flat square, so that's the back face, that's the second face of the cube. So I'll put a second tally mark since we found the second face of the cube. Like a front and a back, the cube has both a left and a right. So let's erase the highlighting on the back face and find the left face of this cube. This is the left face of the cube. So that is now the third face that the cube has. Let's find the opposite, the right face of the cube. So that's the fourth face of this cube. So we did front, back, left, right. What else is there to do? What about top and bottom? This is the top of the cube. So that's the fifth face of my cube. And remember for tally marks, the fifth tally mark wraps up the four so that you can count by fives. This is the bottom face of the cube. So that's the sixth face of the cube. So we've done front, back, left, right, top, and bottom. There are six faces in total of a cube. The next box on the table asks for the number of edges of the cube. An edge is the line where the two faces meet. So let's count the edges of the cube. So first I'm going to look at the front face and find all the edges on the front face. Here's one edge, so I'll put one tally mark. Here's another edge, I'll put a second tally mark. Here's another front edge, my third tally mark. And here's another edge, my fourth tally mark. I found all of the front edges. Now let's go to the back of the cube and find the back edges. Here's a back edge, add that wrapping tally mark for the fifth. Here's a back edge, another tally mark underneath. Here's a back edge, another tally mark, and here's a back edge, another tally mark. Let's find all the edges on my left side. Well, this edge right here, I've already traced. I can't count that. I've already counted it. Therefore, that one I ignore. But here's an edge right up here that I hadn't counted, so I traced it in pink, and I'll put a tally mark for that edge. And here's an edge right here, but I already traced it in green, so I can't count that tally mark but there is a bottom edge that I have not yet traced, so that's my next tally mark. Wrap that around to make a five. So now all of my left edges have been traced. Let's find the edges on the right side face. Well, here's an edge right here, so I'll put a tally mark. This edge has already been traced, so I can't count it. Here's an edge down here, I'll put another tally mark. And this edge right here has already been traced, so I cannot count it. So if I want to see the number of edges the cube has, I'll count my tally marks. I see 5, plus another 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So a cube has 12 edges. And that's going to be the same for all unit cubes. They will all have 6 faces and 12 edges. Just like when we were in kindergarten or preschool, we can take unit cubes, which are like blocks, and build things with them. We can push them next to each other. We can pile them on top of each other. So let's take a look at some pictures of things that I built with unit cubes. So in this figure, I used unit cubes to build a rectangular prism. 
A rectangular prism means that when I put all of my unit cubes together, no matter which side of it, the figure that I look at, it will look like either a rectangle or a square, which makes sense because we know a square is a rectangle, so it will look like a rectangle or a square or a rectangular prism. There will be nothing missing, and there will be nothing sticking out. Often when I see a figure made of unit cubes, I'm asked to see how many cubes are in the figure. In order to do this, I need to decide which is the best perspective or the best way to view the figure so that I see all the cubes. One way that we can view a figure is from the straight on view, which is like standing in front of it. You don't see the top, the bottom, the sides, or anything like that. All you see is the front. So if I was standing right in front of this figure, I would see these faces of my unit cubes right here. How many faces would I see? One, two, three, four, five faces. Would I see all of the cubes in the figure that was built? Well, let's see. I know that unit cube number one, this is another face of the same cube. This is another face of unit cube number two, so I've already counted that cube. That's the top face of unit cube number three, I've counted that cube. That's the top face of unit cube number four, I've counted that cube. And that's the top and the right side faces of unit cube number five. So I've seen all of those cubes from the straight on view. But what else could be hidden here? I didn't see this face at all when I did the straight on view. I didn't see this one, I didn't see this one, I didn't see this one, I didn't see this one front, top, or side. And I didn't see anything in this row from the straight on view. And I also didn't see anything in this row from the straight on view. So would the straight on view be the best perspective to check this figure and to look at this figure? And remember, if I looked at it in the straight on view, I would have only seen those five faces. And we know there's more than five unit cubes here. So the straight on view would not be a good perspective to view this picture from. What if I chose to look at this figure from the side view? Well, there is no side view on the left side, but there is a side view on the right side. So if I stood just on the right side and saw only that side, would that be a good perspective to see how many unit cubes this picture used? So let's see, if I look straight from the side, I'd see one, two, three, these four faces. So let me number them, and I see those four faces. Would that be everything? Let's see what I would see and what I wouldn't see. Again, they're three-dimensional unit cubes. Those two sides are still different faces of cube one, which I've already counted. That's a face of cube two, which I've already counted. That's the top face of cube three, which I've already counted. And that's the top face of cube four, which I've already counted. So I would have seen all of those four cubes. But would I have seen the cubes in the row behind it? No. Nor would I have seen the cubes in the row behind that, nor the row behind that, nor the row behind that. So I would miss a lot of cubes by using the side so this side view isn't going to work so well for us either let's see if there's another perspective I can look at this rectangular prism from well if the straight on view and the side view don't work you can always look at a picture from the bird's eye view it's like a bird flying directly over it and if a bird was flying directly over this figure that's the view that they'd see right there they'd see all of the top faces of all of the unit cubes. Would that be all of the faces if we looked at it from the bird's eye view? Well, let's see how many faces we would have seen. We would have seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty cubes. Let's see if we got everything or if there's anything we would have missed. Well, what's not highlighted is this front face right here. But that face is part of cube number 16, we've already counted it. This face is part of cube number 17, we've already counted it. This face is part of cube number 18, we've already counted it. That face is part of cube number 19, we've counted it. This is part of cube 20, we counted it. And this is also part of cube 20, we've counted it. That's part of cube 15, we've counted it. This is part of cube 10, we've counted it. And this is part of cube 5, we've counted it. So there are no cubes that are missing that we had to put in a different color because when we looked from the bird's eye view, we saw all 20 
unit cubes. So when asked how many cubes we use to make this figure, the answer would be 20 unit cubes. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number one right now. Remember to take your time, check all of your perspectives and all of your views to see which view is going to let you count all of the cubes perfectly. So let's see how many cubes are in this figure. Which perspective should we use? Well, last time the bird's eye view worked well. Again, this was from the bird flying over the top. Let's see if the bird's eye view works for this figure. If I was flying over the top, what faces would I see? I'd certainly see this face right here. I'd see this face, and I'd see this face. Let's count how many faces I'd see. One, two, three. I would see three faces. Are there three unit cubes in the picture? Well, let's see. I see a face right here, but that's a face of unit cube one. I've already counted it. This face is part of unit cube two. I've already counted it. This face is part of unit cube two as well. I've already counted it. This face is part of unit cube three. I've counted it. This face is part of unit cube three as well. I've counted it. But this face is not part of unit cubes one, two, or three. That's a different unit cube. So is this one, and so is this one, and so is this one. So if I looked at this from the bird's eye view, would I be able to count all of my cubes? No, I wouldn't, because I think there was only three, and there's certainly more than three. So let's try the side view. If I wanted to do a left side view, it wouldn't be helpful to me at all, because I have no idea what's on that left side, so that I could not do. If I tried to do a right side view, I would be looking at it from this side. And let's see what I would see. I would see this one, this one, and this side. So I'd see one, two, three sides. I would think it was made up of three unit cubes. So let's see if that works. So th those two sides are both faces of unit cube three. I've counted that cube. The top and the front are faces of unit cube two. I've counted that cube. And this front is a face of unit cube one. I've counted that cube. But I didn't see this cube right here. Nor did I see this one because it was hidden behind, those are hidden behind cubes 2 and 1. Nor did I see this one, which is also hidden behind 1. Nor did I see this cube. So I would not have seen all of the cubes in the picture. What if I looked at the straight on view? I looked straight looking at it, didn't see any top left, just saw the front. I would see this face, this face, this face, this face, this face, this face, and this face. So I'd see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven faces. Would I have seen everything or is there anything missing? Well, let's go back and check. This face is part of unit cube two. I've already counted it. This face is part of unit cube one. I've counted it. This is also part of unit cube one that I've counted. This face right down here is part of unit cube four that I've counted. That's also a face of unit cube four and I've counted it. And this is a face of unit cube 7, and I've counted it. So the straight-on view would be perfect. It would show me all of the cubes, and none would be hidden. Therefore, how many unit cubes make up this figure? The answer is 7 unit cubes. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number 2 right now. Remember, decide the perspective that will help you count all of the cubes. Let's take a look at the figure in example number three. How many unit cubes were used to make this figure? This figure is a little bit different because it shows you some different perspectives. I see that if I look at it from the side view, there's nothing on the right side, but there is a left side view. So we'd only be seeing straight on from that left side. I would have this, this, and this that I would see, which is one, two, three. I would see three faces, and I would think that there are three cubes in this figure. But let's see. This is a face of cube number one. I've counted it. Also a face of cube number one. I've counted it. This is a face of cube number two. I've counted it. This is a face of cube number three, which I've already counted. And that one is also a face of cube number three, which I've already counted. I would see three faces. I think there are three cubes. But look, I have all of these leftover cubes in the other rows behind it that I never got to see. So the side perspective would not work well for this figure. 
What about the bird's eye view from the top? Well, I can't see what the bird's eye view is, so I can't use that for this figure. But even though this figure doesn't have a bird's eye view for me to see, it does have what I like to call an ant's view, an A-N-T-S, ant's view. If I was an ant crawling on the ground and I looked up, what would I see? I would see from this perspective. So I would see this one, and I would see this one. I would also see this one and this one. Those are all from the bottom view, from the ant's perspective. So I would see four faces, and I would think that this figure was made up of four cubes. But is that true? Well, this face is part of cube number one, those two faces. I've already counted that. These two faces are part of cube number two. I've counted those. That face is part of cube number three. I've already counted that. And that face is part of cube number four. I've already counted that. But look, there are some cubes that I did not see a bottom face for because it was rows behind the bottom face that I looked at. So I would not see these two or these two. So I would miss out on four cubes because they'd be hidden behind cubes two and three. So the ant perspective will not work for this figure. So if I looked at this figure from the straight on view, I would see all of these faces. And if I counted them, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces. So let's see if I've gotten all of the cubes. This face is part of cube one, I counted it. That face is part of cube one, I counted it. This face is part of cube five, I counted it. That face is part of cube seven, and so is that one, I've counted that. This face is part of cube eight, I've counted it. This face is part of cube four, I've counted it. So I've counted all of the cubes. Therefore, this figure has, or is made up of, eight unit cubes. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number three right now. How many cubes make up figure number four, and which perspective should you look at it from, or which view should you look at it from, to count all of the cubes? So think about it. If I looked at this from the straight on view, would I see all of the cubes? Or if I looked at it from the bird's eye view, would I see all of the cubes? Or if I looked at it from the side view, would I see all of the cubes? Which view do you think I need to look at this figure from? If you said the side view, you'd see one, all these faces, which are one, two, three, four, five faces. Did we get everything? Well, this side and this side are part of cubes one, we got them. That's part of cube two, we got it. That's part of cube three, we got it. That's part of cube four, we got it. And that's part of cube five, we got it. So the side perspective or the side view would be the way to look at this figure. And this figure is made up of five unit cubes. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number four right now. Example number five is a bit different. It is a rectangular prism. I don't see any spaces or anything sticking out, so I know it's a rectangular prism made of unit cubes. But look at number five. It definitely has two layers, either a front and back or a top and bottom layer. I'm going to look at it as a top and bottom layer. So if I make the entire top layer of cubes in blue and the entire bottom layer of cubes in purple, the layers stand out even more to me. And if I see this cube right here, I know that it's standing up high because it's on top of this cube that's underneath it. I can see that. But if I take a look at this cube over here, I can't see from no matter which perspective I look at it from, top, straight on, or side, I cannot see the cube that's underneath it. So how do I know that there is a cube underneath it? How do I know that there's nothing underneath it? Well, you're to assume, unless you see an actual space, you are to assume that if there's a cube up high, there must be one underneath it holding it up. It's going to be the same thing for over here. There has to be a cube underneath it holding it up, or it would drop down. And the same thing for over here. There has to be a cube underneath it holding it up, or it would have dropped down. So we are to assume that. But what happens if you see a picture like this? Let's take a look at this cube. 
that's holding itself up in the air. But the difference with this picture and this figure is that we can see right underneath here, there was most definitely an empty space there. So if you see the empty space, there can be an empty space. But if you cannot see any of the cubes that are there, you are supposed to assume that is correct mathematical procedure. You are to assume that there's something underneath it. it hold it's correct mathematical procedure that we are supposed to assume there's another cube underneath it holding it up. So actually, for this rectangular prism, since it's more than one layer, bird's eye view would not get all of them. And the side view would also not get all of them. And the straight on view would also not get all of them. So what can you do? How can you figure out how many cubes are in the figure? Well, you can take just one layer and you know that the layer underneath it, especially if it's a rectangular prism, there's nothing sticking out or no space is missing. The layer underneath it must be the same size. So you can add that layer twice or you can multiply it by two. Let's see how it's done. So if I was going to tackle this problem and I was going to look at just one layer, I might choose to look at the bird's eye view, which would let me see all of these faces. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces. And I know that all of these are side faces of those same cubes. So on the top layer, there are eight faces. But I have a bottom layer as well, and I know it's the same number of cubes on the bottom layer. So therefore, I would say, Eight unit cubes times two layers equals 16 unit cubes in all. But let's look at it another way. So what if I looked at this from the straight on view? I would see these faces right here. And if I saw these faces right here, I would know that there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight faces. And I would know that all of these are other faces of those same cubes. So that I have the one row with eight cubes. But there's another row just like it in the back. And again, remember we said if there's a cube up high and it doesn't show me that there's a space underneath, I'm expected to believe there's another cube underneath holding it up. So here I have a blue row of eight, and behind it there would be a purple row of eight as well. So how many unit cubes are there? One, two rows and eight cubes in each row. So eight unit cubes times two rows is going to equal 16 unit cubes in all. Notice that's the same number of cubes that I found from doing the straight on view as I would have found if I had done the bird's eye view. But let's check it out from the side view now. So if I chose to use the side perspective or the side view, I would see these faces right here. That's one, two, three, four faces. These faces are all parts of those same cubes that I just counted. That's one row. But if I'm looking at, for, at it from the side view, behind that there's another row of four cubes as well, and behind that there's a third row of four cubes as well, and behind that there's a fourth row of four cubes as well. So I have here one, two, three, four rows, each with four cubes. So in order to find out how many cubes are all together for this perspective, I would say four unit cubes, and that's from my side view, times four rows, because there are four rows of them that I see from my top or front view, and four times four equals 16 so there are 16 unit cubes in all. So I just wanted to show you that you can look at it in either of those ways for a rectangular prism, and you can still get the same correct final answer in the end, whether it was the front view, the top view, or the side view. Please stop the video and complete worksheet number five right now. And example number six is yet another type of problem you may see. You have to see how many unit cubes were used to make each of the figures, and then you have to compare 
with greater than, less than, or equal to. So let's take a look at the first figure on the left-hand side. Which perspective should you use, which view, to count all of the unit cubes? Would the bird's eye view work best? Would the straight on view work best? Or would the sideways view work best? I think that the straight on view is going to let me see all of the cubes. Those are the faces. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. I go to make sure that there's none that were hidden. This face goes with cube three, so it's good. That face goes with cube one, I counted it. This face goes with cube two, so does this face, I counted that already. This face goes with cube three, so does this face, I counted it already. So this figure on the left hand side has a total of six unit cubes. Now let's take a look at the figure on the right hand side. Which perspective would be the best perspective to look at it from to count all of the cubes? Would the bird's eye view work best? Would the side view work best? Or would the straight on view work best? Again, for here, the straight on view is going to work best. And again, we're going to take the straight on view so we see all of these faces here, which is one, two, three, four faces. Let's make sure that we don't have any that were hidden. This is part of cube number four. I've counted it. This side is part of cube number three. I've counted it. This side and that side are part of cube number one. I've counted it. And this side is part of cube number two. I counted it. So there are four unit cubes used to make up this picture on the right hand side. So now I just compare. Is six unit cubes greater than less than or equal to four unit cubes and it is greater than so six unit cubes is greater than four unit cubes and that's my final answer please stop the video and complete worksheet number six right now so let's review edges are the lines where two faces meet there are twelve edges on a cube Faces are the flat sides of a cube. There are six faces on a cube. The front face, the back face, the left face, the right face, the top face, and the bottom face. When looking at unit cubes for a figure, you need to decide which is the perspective that will let you look at the figure and count all of the cubes. In this case, we looked from the bird's eye view. In number two, we used the straight on view. In number four, we used the side view. When you have a rectangular prism with more than one layer or more than one row, count how many cubes there are in whatever view you're looking at it in and multiply that by the number of rows or the number of layers. Here we did the side view which had four cubes and there were four rows so four times four equals 16 cubes in all. And sometimes you're asked to compare so you need to see the number of unit cubes in each figure and compare your final number of cubes with greater than, less than, or equal to. So hopefully by now you can confidently say, I know what a unit cube is, and I can find the number of cubic units in a solid figure. We will continue practicing in class. If you have difficulty with this, please see a teacher and we will help you. Good luck with the lesson.